and in Greece, violent clashes between protesters and police. The protesters are upset by the Prime Minister's announcement that the government is committed to austerity measures. Greeks hurl stones at police who respond with tear gas outside a trade fair Saturday. Angry over an austerity program, labor unions, civil servants, students and taxi drivers gather outside fairgrounds where Prime Minister Georgios Papandreou is speaking. Police detained 106 people as masked protesters burned trash bins, chairs and other objects. Despite public uproar, the Prime Minister said Greece is committed to meeting the conditions of its international bailout. We made a decision to wage a battle in order to avoid a catastrophe, a catastrophic bankruptcy for the country and its people, to stay in the euro, and this means difficult decisions, difficult sacrifices. Nearly two years of reforms, pay cuts and tax increases have failed to revive the economy. Senior Eurozone officials have cast doubt that the country can avoid bankruptcy or stay within the euro currency. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, September 12th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Um, this is my website, ggnaligned.com. That's www.ggnaligned.com. Um, also, um, you can check me out on YouTube, ddarko2012. Uh, also on Facebook, Global Government News Group. Um, the links for all these articles and the um, GGN, uh, basically their Facebook group, will be on um, YouTube's video description, so check in the video description with all the headlines and links and other links as well. Um, you can um, subscribe via email here and you'll get it sent to your email. Also, I have a news archive with all my news there and I'm going to keep moving. Um, also, you can share these uh, these videos too. But I'm going to keep moving here because I have plenty of news to get to. I hope all of you had a good weekend. Uh, it says here, EU stocks plunge amid debt crisis fears. And I'm going to go through the economy, and then I'm going to finish up with some eugenics. And in the next video, I'll get into the war of terror and the war on um, freedom. So major European stock markets have dropped in late trade as investors are becoming increasingly more worried about the deepening EU debt crisis. And you just heard the Greek prime minister saying that they got to stay in the euro. they got to meet the conditions of a bailout. Well, no, you don't. <laughs> so... You know, uh, look at Ireland. Are they better off? So it says here, Alan Greenspan believes a euro breakdown is likely. So according to the former head of the Federal Reserve Bank, uh, it says here, Mr. Greenspan, quote, the euro is breaking down and in doing so is creating very serious difficulties. The breakdown is due in part to the variations between and among the various eurozone economies. So it goes on there and questions the 17-member communist bloc. Uh, that was envisioned by Karl Marx. And then uh, he goes in there and he blames it. He says that uh, that this is, it is also because of the integration of the world's eco uh, economies. In other words, globalization. And uh, he said that's where the fiscal crisis matters is the Eurozone. So this has all been set up, all fabricated, and uh, so they can create a United States of Europe. Stocks in the U.S. advance on report. China may agree to purchase Italian bonds. So uh, go in there and check that out. Then we have, uh, oh yeah, and I just want to uh, throw in there real quick. It's kind of uh, crazy when you think about it, the United States of Europe. It's like because before they had their own sovereign nations. And if you go over to Europe, I've personally, I've only flown through like uh, Rammstein Air Force Base in Germany. I was in the military and I was in Spain and uh, Sevilla or Seville, whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, I wasn't really in Spain a lot, but I do know that the countries are not uh, like the United States as far as like their big size. Um, some of the uh, countries are about the size of some states. Um, and so, you know, with that being said, the United States uh, in a confederation of states would each be their own little sovereign country. Unfortunately, we're a union of states. I'm not really all for that. And in doing that, uh, you basically each state is no longer its own sovereign little country with their own currency, with their own problems, with their own everything that they have. The good, you know, the good and the bad with it, but they have their own little thing going on. But no, they have to have a union where you can homogenize and sterilize all this sovereignty and put it all into one super centralized government. And, uh, of course, now they're trying to offload that into the UN, which is now there's no national government, now just like this global body, which is even worse. But I guess what my point is, is like in Europe, um, they had actual some sovereignty, and then they went to this European Union. Now they're going to go to um, like a United States. So 
they're going to lose even more of their sovereignty. So they're not. It's going to be like uh, Germany is going to be like uh, just the state of Pennsylvania and states over here in the United States. Really, the only the only power that they really have is to secede from the Union. And the Confederacy did that. And the North waged uh, a vicious war campaign, bloodless blood campaign against them for trying to succeed from the Union. They blamed it on slavery, but they didn't give a shit about the actual slaves, uh, which made up many different uh, people, not just blacks. Um, but it wasn't about that. It was about the economy. They wanted to damage the South's economy and get them back into that tax base. So they used slavery as a means, saying, oh, see how much money each slave owner makes? So anyways, I'm sorry I went off on a tangent there, but I just wanted to uh, talk about that because I find that kind of interesting. Stock in Canada falls, financial shares drop, and then in the UK, stocks extend losses. Also, in the Nikkei tumbles 2.31% on Eurozone turmoil. The Nigerian central bank governor says uh, yuan becoming reserve currency. I wanted to cover that on the 9th, but I didn't have time. And we move on to commodities. Uh, right now, Brent crude is down. A not much, but it's at $112. Gas oil futures down about $10. Heating oil futures down $3.15. Natural gas, uh, not really much change. Um, big ones for agriculture are down 30 with soybeans. And um, let's see here, cocoa was down 10. And moving down to metals, we have uh, 45 cents. Copper was down 45 cents, now at just under $400 at 399 Gold at $1,819, down $40. And silver, uh, right at the $40 mark, and it was down $1.22. China August trade surplus dips as exports off peak. So China's trade surplus fell sharply in August as exports pulled back from a record high and imports jumped, indicating the world's second largest economy is feeling the pinch from weaker global growth, while domestic demand remains resilient. And it goes on, it says the export growth was stronger than uh, expectations of 21.6% in a Reuters poll. China expands lead in Afghan commodities by adding oil to copper mine plants. So China National, National sorry, Petroleum Corporation offered the highest royalty and a refinery to win Afghanistan's first oil field auction last month using a strategy that helped Chinese companies gain access to African resources. I've covered this before and we'll keep covering uh, China and Africa, because there's, there's a big story. It says here, U.S. corporations set to profit well from uh, green light bulb production in China with Treasury Department help. So, um, yeah, that's right. Next year, they're going to force you to be uh, using these um, green bulbs. And it says the reason behind the law requires a phase out of the current incandescent bulbs in favor of new green bulbs. The latter are more efficient and better for the environment. May be a good idea on the surface. And then, of course, when you see that uh, the government is forcing you to uh, begin paying 2 to $3 each light bulb is not only involved financially with the deal, but helping to fund the Chinese company that will be making the bulbs. So this is interesting. According to the recent published report, two U.S. Uh, corporations or extensions of the government, uh, banking monster Goldman Sachs, the Goldman Sachs and networking giant Cisco invested mightily uh, and uh, Chinese lighting maker NVC Lighting Holding, a Cayman Island listed firm that was founded in 98, says Goldman Sachs via its Asian subsidiary and Cisco uh, said here it began buying stock in 2008 and 2006. So go in there and check that out. Still have a lot of news to get to. Israel export to Egypt drops 33%. And I wonder why that is. It says here, Rubini without stimulus, another Great Depression. So they said uh, here, the slowdown of the world economy has accelerated the timing likelihood of a new global financial crisis. So there's always that crisis, that impending doom and gloom. Economist uh, Rubini said last week, he says, I thought a few months ago that the perfect storm would be 2013, but now the economic weakness in the U.S. and the Eurozone in the U.K. is uh, front-loaded. So we're going to double dip earlier the climax it could be 2013 or it could be earlier so goes in there and uh, explains it even more it says here s p 500 may plunge 21 percent bank of america says so um also it says unfortunately nothing in our work suggests that the market is improving and uh, I guess they're going to be cutting 30,000 jobs as well, Bank of America is. They want a United States of Europe, but they are going to need a massive financial crisis in order to get it. And you can go in there and uh, check that out. And it uh, says that here among the political and financial leaders of uh, Europe, that a United States Europe is what would be the best for the Eurozone. So... So the EU, as it is currently structured, simply does not work. The uh, political will for more bailouts is rapidly drying up, and politicians in Europe are only going to be able to extend and pretend for a little while longer. Something needs to be done. Problem, reaction, solution, right? That's why, you know, like I said, it's probably uh, this is all being uh, manufactured. 
And if it's not, then it's just a result of uh, uh, shitty policies. It says here, but instead of admitting that the euro was a massive mistake and returning to national currencies, most of the top politicians in Europe believe that more Europe is the answer. So it says here the incoming European Central Bank um, head, because the last one stepped down, is totally convinced Europe will need to integrate much more deeply. He says, to cope with this, we must have a treaty change. The aim of this effort should be a quantum leap in European economic and political integrations. Uh, then its predecessor feels the same way, Mr. Trichet, and he says the crisis is clearly revealed the need for strong economic governance in a zone with a single currency and uh, goes in hand here and it says here Herman Rompuy says Herman uh, Rompuy is ready to run for a second term as EU president and the head of the United States of Europe and it goes on here and it says in the same article he's quoted as saying he wants another term because the work is not finished he has announced he's willing to take on the unfurnished eurozone crisis with new powers setting an economic government in Brussels so uh, you can go in there and check that out. But let's not forget about David Cameron of the UK. He was branded on the EU uh, enthusiast by Tory Eurosceptics last night. Uh, as he said, Britain must let Eurozone countries move towards the United States of Europe with a common economic now we have IMF's Kristen Lagarde urges global action at G7 meet. So it says here the IMF chief uh, Lagarde has urged bold action. So you got to take bold action and a coordinated response. And uh, that means unilaterally without the uh, representation uh, or the voice of the people, right? Obama says Congress should act on 447. Before it was $300 million, Now it's $447 billion jobs plan with no delays. You have to do it now. No games. No politics. No delays, bipartisanship, get it done now. I'm sending this bill. It ought to pass it immediately. This is all what he's saying. So it's just the same uh, uh, rhetoric and fear-mongering that goes on. And this is, of course, I've covered this before. This is about setting up an infrastructure bank. So go in there and check out my last set of videos on uh, what – what was it, uh, September uh, 9th or so? Either way, go check it out because I, I covered a, a few articles on the infrastructure bank. It's gonna, an actual infrastructure bank that's going to be set up, a fund, and that's what this is really about. He, Obama can't create jobs. You know, they can't create, if they do create jobs, they're not sustainable. They're government jobs and they're going to go away. Families hit by the biggest squeeze on, and the best thing they can do is stay the hell out of the economy. I've said this before. Families hit by the biggest squeeze on income, income since the Second World War, and there's years of pain ahead. So that's what researchers warned today, talking about the impact of the Great Recession. So also 33% of Americans raised middle class, moved downward as adults. That's right. I was raised, uh, I, I guess it could be considered middle class, but I would consider it middle class. The lower class because you know i got my shoes and stuff my clothes at the goodwill and salvation army that's no joke um and uh but unfor but fortunately i was able to go at least half of my grade school um in uh, private school and then uh high school so and you can say well that's that's middle class that's middle class but uh either way we shopped at Aldi's, and, uh, you know, back in the day, Aldi's was pretty shitty, and you'd be kind of embarrassed to go in there. I'm not now, but uh, those were all the signs that I think I was from middle to lower middle class. I grew up in an old, rundown steel uh, neighborhood in South Chicago, so I think that that classifies it as that. And what I'm saying is that uh, uh, now, no, I wouldn't even consider myself middle class at all. I'm, again, I'm on the poverty status right now. So, and that's true. And I'm looking around seeing all these other people that have been working in their lives and uh, they have nothing to show for it. So, and, so, and they're getting laid off too. They're just getting let go after 30 years because they don't want to pay the benefits and the uh, the high uh, uh, high salaries. Student loan default rate rises, so less people are going to, going to be going to college. Exclusive holiday shoppers who spend less, so get used to it, Americans. Union seeks national resistance to austerity cuts. Talking about union workers. And time bomb fears rationing by stealth of operations hits NHS. And would you drink recycled sewage and why it grosses us out? And that's right. I've covered that before. Pesticides may cause ADHD in children and school nurses work to get teens vaccinated. Vaccine deniers and the fear behind contagion. That's the biggest box office movie. And it's programming and printing for the future false flag pandemic. How the CDC would deal with the real life contagion. So go in there and check that out. I think it's how you pronounce it. Phthalates should be avoided in personal care products such as soap and that. Fast-moving cartoons can clouds kids' concentration. Canadians with mental illnesses are denied U.S. entry. And then here we go. It says here that a woman who injected uh, uh, beef fat has died. Cargo announces second ground turkey recall after salmonella. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.